morning, so it is the back of 10 on Saturday, the first day of the Femme Bandtail Readathon. I've just had a shower, I need to brush my hair. Um, but I'm ready for my weekend of being alone and reading. I'm so excited. Um, I basically have very conveniently managed to end up doing this readathon on a weekend where I have literally nothing else going on in sort of with other people. Um, my boyfriend's in Wales, uh, I've not made any plans with my friends, so I have Saturday and Sunday just to read fantasy books written by women, do some work on my PhD because I do have some stuff to do in regards to that, and just chill, which I really think I'm in need of. I might go to the cinema by myself, which I love doing, either to see How to Train Your Dragon 3 or Instant Family. Um, those are the two things that I've not seen that I'm kind of interested in. Um, and I love going to cinema by myself. I find, so February's just finished obviously, and I find February miserable time of year. Just this time of year generally I find difficult. Um, like my mood's usually lower around this time of year. Um, and the cinema is one of the things I really like to do when I'm feeling like that. Just go by myself, sit in a little bubble. Um, it's really enjoyable, but other than that, Oh, I'm just excited to have a weekend where, apart from like obviously doing some work, I can literally just flop around my flat and read fantasy books and chat with you guys and do Twitter sprints with you guys and it's going to be so, so, so nice. So I have been um, trying to pick which um, book to read first. So I'm sorry, I'm just opening my laptop. Um, so I ran a poll on Twitter and let's see who is winning the Twitter poll. Do, do, do. So I am listening to a fantasy audiobook at the moment written by women, which is Entreat Me by Grace Draven, but I need to know what physical book to start first. So I put The Wrath and the Dawn, The Witches of Elianan, I'm not really sure how you meant to say that, uh, The Burning the Nightingale and Outrun the Wind, and at the moment The Burning the Nightingale is definitely coming up top, but second is The Wrath and the Dawn, so I'm kind of undecided which one to read, let me get them. So it's gonna be one of these two I'm gonna start with. Um, um, so, I need to make up my mind, make myself a second coffee, cause that's that time of the day, um, and just flop down and read. But yeah, I will obviously let you know which one I end up picking. Um, I'm gonna go see what people have been saying on Twitter first and make myself a coffee. Okay, it's two minutes to 12 and the first like reading sprint chat on Twitter starts at 12 so I'm ready with my laptop to um, get started on that with my first physical book and that's The Wrath and the Dawn. I continued listening to and treat me a little bit this morning as I've just been potting around, putting on washing. That might be the violent noise you can hear behind me which is the washing machine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm like officially starting this at 12 with everybody else in the, in the sprints so yeah I'm gonna have fun with that. So I had a lovely time doing the reading sprints with everyone on Twitter. I am enjoying The Wrath and the Dawn. I'm not super, super far into it. I'm about 30 pages into it, but it's one of those books that's managed to get me hooked instantly, you know, it just um, like plunges you straight into everything. Um, and other than that, I have been listening to more of Entreat Me by Grace Draven whilst doing my knitting. Um, you've probably seen, uh, what does it look like? Look at this. I am knitting this for my friend Jill's birthday. Um, it's meant to sort of be mermaidy colours. Um, I've got, I'm pretty much finished this ball of wool and I've got one more ball of wool to add to it and then it should be done. Um, so I was doing that, so I'm almost finished my scarf. That's three balls of wool. <laughs> and I'm almost finished in Treat Me. I'm super, super close to the end, so I'm definitely gonna finish that audiobook today. Um, I'd obviously started the book before the readathon. I think I was about 60% of the way in. So I'm gonna finish that today. And what I didn't realize though is that both in Treat Me and The Wrath of the Dawn are retellings of Beauty and the Beast. Like, how did I manage to end up reading two at the same time? But, oh well, no no problems there. I did also just pop to the library, so I thought I'd just show you what I borrowed. Um, and that is The Terrible by Ursa Daly Ward. Ursa Daly Ward is a poet that I really like. I read her collection Bone, and this is about her life um, growing up in the northwest of England. And it looks to be sort of like mixed 
form so it looks like some of it's more in prose and some of it's more in poetry so I think this will be really interesting um I also have a book that I may read for this readathon and that is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor I don't really know what this is about except that everybody loves Lainey Taylor and this was the one that my library had so I figured I'd give it a shot again fitting in with the readathon theme I have Wondersmith The Trials of Morrigan Crow uh, this is the second book in the Nevermore series I actually took this out of my library before and started it and then never managed to finish it before it was requested back and um, so I'm taking it back out I'm starting it again um, and I'm hopefully gonna get to this one I think I would like to get to this one during the readathon because I would like to be up to date with the series and I very much enjoyed the first one it should also although it's kind of chunky not take too long to read because it is a middle grade book and then we have the Nakano thrift shop by Hiromi Kawakami which is a Japanese novel that I've heard really great things about um, and last year I was reading a bit more Japanese literature and I'd like to follow that through this year and read some more so I thought this would be a good place to start um, but those are the books I've got at the library um, in about an hour's time I'm gonna go to the cinema like I said it's to see um I've decided to go and see Instant Family mainly because there's not any good times for How to Train Your Dragon 3. I can always see that on rent it when it when it comes out on a uh, streaming. So I've got my sweeties ready for the cinema. I've also got a can of Rubicon in the fridge um and between that I'm going to do more reading and more PhD. So I've also done a bit of PhD this afternoon. <laughs> I'm just about to head off to university but I thought I should do a quick update since I didn't update you yesterday I just filmed a few like random clips of what I was doing um, Jill and I hosted some reading sprints Jill wasn't able to host with me on Saturday because she was at a hen party but we had loads of fun yesterday hosting reading sprints like twice that day and um, on the reading front I have now Finished the audiobook I'd already started before the readathon, so I only had like 40% of the way to go, which was Entreat Me by Grace Draven. Really enjoyed that. Um, but I also finished a full audiobook that I started yesterday and finished this morning because I could not put it down. I like stayed up extra late last night because I wanted to finish it and then just needed to go to sleep. So I had to finish it this morning. And that is Bryony and Roses by T. Kingfisher. And honestly, this was another Beauty and the Beast retelling and it like blew me away. It was genuinely funny. The like protagonist was so witty and she had such great banter with the beast character. And it was also genuinely creepy. Like there was such a creepy mystery going on in this house and like what was behind the curse and like who was in charge, who was in control. It was so creepy. And I was so impressed that she managed to do all of that because it wasn't very long. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And I'm about halfway through the Wrath and the Dawn now, which is um, the physical book I'm currently reading and I was reading during the reading sprints. But yeah, I'm also really enjoying The Wrath and the Dawn. I've got to, like a like good turning point in the plot. I'm really intrigued to see where things go. So, so far so good with all the books I have picked up during this readathon. So I just need to pick that next audiobook, but um, I'll probably read The Wrath and the Dawn um, on my journey to and from university. But yeah, that's my update for now. I'm finished at university for the day and heading back home should get some more red on the journey back as I did on the journey here um, I still haven't picked a new audiobook though I listened to a bit of one on the way here but not sure if I'm really getting into it I'm just not in the right mood need something else so I'm probably gonna waste hours of my life trying to pick an audiobook when I could be listening to an audiobook but you know the feeling So I'm just on my way back from university again. I was teaching all morning, uh, well, from 10 to 1. And now I'm going to have lunch with Jen, which will be lovely. But I'm also so close to the end of The Wrath of the Dawn and I need to get to the end and I've ordered the sequel online. Because <laughs> I've actually gotten super into it. There's something about 
writing that reminds me a little bit of Libba, Libba, Libba Brabe. I'm not sure why. Um, I also realised I forgot to tell you that the film I went to see the other night, Instant Family, was superb. Hi. Are you reading a fantasy book at the moment? No, but I can't remember. What am I reading? Oh, I'm reading Pride's Judgy books at the moment. Uh, I can't really talk about them, which is very boring. But I want to, what do I want to read next? Women's Prize? Maybe I've got Bottled Goods yeah. on my TBR and that's short, so maybe that. Oh, no, I need to read um, Wolf Border by Sarah Hall oh, yeah. afterwards. And then we're reading that Tentacle thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited about Tentacle. Uh, in the next few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Jane and I are just going to have our coffees and do some work. Like productive bees. What magical animal are you? A golem. That's okay. Is it? Yeah. I'm a golem too. Okay. But really? There we go. That's better. Okay. Yeah, if you fully extend your body, if we're I, dragons. If I extend myself to like my full potential. Exactly. Dragon. Fair. <laughs> okay, I can't get over how beautiful Gareth Street Watterson's is. Look at the children's section. <gasps> so pretty. I would have loved this as a kid. I mean, we love it now. Yeah, but like I could have just lived in here as a child. <laughs> so I've just finished my book and I don't know if I'm repeating myself, but I've ordered the sequel on Wordery. It's not gonna come for like four days and I need the sequel. This is one of those books, it just has one of those endings where like things are not all wrapped up. In fact, drama has really just escalated and I need to know what happened next. Ugh. I... <laughs> I wish I'd like, I literally wish I'd made the effort to go to a bookshop and buy the sequel today and not order it online, but it's too late now. Um, because I would like to just pick back, like pick up the next one and keep reading that for the readathon, but I can't. I can't. Oh, this, um, oh, it's obviously very good and very enthralling and everything better work out in the sequel because if it doesn't, I'll be furious. I in like more serious literary fiction, it doesn't need to be happy, but in this kind of thing, I need joy and happiness and resolution at the end because I'm reading it for escapism and joy and I just, I need to know what happens. Oh God, but now I need to pick a new book to read tonight during the reading sprint, so I better go do that. So I am just sat here working on some of my lesson plans for the next few weeks. There is um, three weeks left in the teaching term at my university after this week, um, which means I still have nine hours of classes to teach, um, which most of the prep is done for, but I find it doesn't matter how far in advance I've prepped my classes, I always end up adding things last minute. There's more things I want to talk about. Um, so I'm just working on really kind of like that final final week um, and some of like our group exercises that we're doing. I'm currently, I, I teach Introduction to Ancient History and um, we're currently um, on the Roman Empire, so that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, but I did start listening to a new audio audiobook last night. Finally, I picked what one I want to read. Yes! And that is the second Charlie Bone book by Jenny Nemo, which is a middle grade series that I read most of, if not all of, when I was a kid. Um, and reread the first one in last year, or listened to the audiobook, because my library has them, at least the first two on audiobook. Um, and I've decided to continue on with that series because it's just, it's just an easy, engaging listen. And we'll listen to more of that today, probably, as well as read a little bit. Um, but last night I also spent a good couple of hours writing, which was so nice. I wrote a few thousand words of my current writing project, which is a fantasy novel, so I feel like it's very apt um, for this readathon. Um, but I've officially passed both the 30,000 word mark and the 100 page mark on my Word documents. I think I'm on around 32 something thousand words if not 33,000 words and I've written like 104, 105 pages, which is just like so satisfying. I'm like really proud of myself and I reached a part 
part in the story that I was really looking forward to writing and I did very much enjoy writing it and getting it down on the page so that was a really satisfying and fun last night um, so it wasn't really reading fantasy it was writing fantasy but nevertheless it was enjoyable and today like I said I'm working on um, my classes from home um, if I do have time though I'm going to try and film another video so like an actual full-length video maybe a favourite because it's been a while since I did one of those so yeah It's almost time for bed. I mean, I'm in bed, but I'm not in my pyjamas. Um, I'm reading a bit of the book that I've just started, which is Daughter of Smoke and uh, Bone by Lainey Taylor, which is a young adult novel that I've been hearing amazing things about for years, and I am enjoying it. I'm not terribly far into it at the moment. I'm enjoying the writing, although there are like a few sort of like cliches in there. Um, but like maybe that like when I was a teen, I would have like drooled over a little bit, but don't really like do it for me anymore <laughs> um it just not even as an adult just as the person I am now um and I also hate that trope does anybody else agree of sort of um only have sex with people you're in love with or they will screw you over because it just like it just makes me roll my eyes um but overall enjoying it well written mysterious from the offset has me has me engaged um and I would like to finish that um by Friday so I can also hopefully read a good chunk of The White Mare by Jules Watson which is an ex-library copy that I bought second hand as opposed to having borrowed from the library um, but I've been feeling a bit bleh today uh, mentally so I thought I'd just check in let you know what I'm reading and then check back out and see you tomorrow so I didn't vlog anything yesterday as you will have seen work, life other things going on and I doubt I'm going to vlog a terrible amount today either. I am however, because I want to update you on my reading progress, um, two thirds of the way into Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor and I really would like to finish this by tomorrow morning um, and Jill and I do have some sprints planned for Saturday etc so um, I'm hoping that this will be done by Saturday morning. And I'm really enjoying it actually, it's funny, it's um, definitely a bit cheesy and eye rolly, tropey, YA teeny-ness in, in small doses um, where I've been like, oh. <laughs> but those are like minor in comparison to the incredible world building. Like this is such an imaginative world, I've never read a fantasy world like this, it is a combination of our world uh, interacting with other worlds and I just think it's incredible, like I'm so impressed with the author's ability to come up with this and like weave all these mysteries into the plot that make you curious about this other world and the magic system. So I'm overall really enjoying this and can totally see why it's probably one of the most hyped up YA series on booktube. I'm glad I finally got to it. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying that, would like to finish it soon because I would like to squeeze in one more book over the weekend. I'm going to Manchester on Sunday, so I'm going to be on the train for hours there and back, which means I'll be able to get a lot of reading done on the train. And I'm thinking I can start um, a short book or a novella over the weekend and get that ticked off my list. I'm considering treating myself to Romancing the Inventor on the Kindle, which is a novella by Gail Carragher and involves a female-female romance. And that's kind of what I'm craving. But all the other female female romances I have are quite long. Um, so I was thinking I'd be meaning to get that one for a while. So maybe I'll have like a wee short one. Um, so that should be nice. But otherwise today is another like um, tick things off the list, get some work done. I'm seeing my boyfriend this evening so that'll be nice. Can have a relaxing pint on a Friday evening. Very much up for that. Um, and that's kind of everything that's going on with me. So yeah, I might. Or might not see you again today if not I'll definitely see you tomorrow on Saturday um, and although this video will be going up after the fact happy International Women's Day because it is the 8th of March today and that was one of the reasons I decided to run the readathon this week because it did coincide with International Women's Day which obviously um, seemed very apt for a um, female fantasy focused readathon um, but um, yeah um, 
all of my hats off to um, the women that have come before us and the women just now who are doing incredible things um, to f fight for a better society. And um, yeah, f onward and upward, hopefully. So yeah, happy International Women's Day. We'll see you again tomorrow, probably. Um, hope you're enjoying your reading. afternoon so I am just doing chores around my flat just now my friend Elsa is having a board game birthday party this evening well it's after, late afternoon early evening so um I'll be heading to that later so I'm just trying to like tidy up do some cleaning do some organizing before I head off to hers um but I realized I haven't updated you on my reading I should also mention I have toned my hair that's why it's looking kind of purpley silvery if you can see um yeah so I think I already showed you a clip of the toner I use but it's super inexpensive and I really like it I don't tone my hair often because I don't like it's only so much damage <laughs> one head of hair can take but every now and then I like to treat myself um, but back on the topic of books I finished this last night Daughter of Smoke and Bow by Lainey Taylor I very much enjoyed this I can totally see why it's such a hyped up young adult fantasy series because there's so much world building and it's such a unique world, it's incredible. Um, I just found that whole aspect of this book so, so good. It got quite fast paced and dramatic near the end and I am interested in reading the sequel, but I'm not like in a rush to read it in comparison to um, The Wrath and the Dawn, which I'm still waiting for the sequel to arrive in the post and I need to read that. Whereas this I'm like looking forward to reading, but not like I must have it now, but it's okay because my library does have the sequel. And I started this morning uh, Fires of the Faithful by um, Naomi Kritzer, which is set in a like high fantasy world at a um, musical conservatory. Our protagonist plays violin, um, but they also sort of work magic. And it is a queer female-female romance as well, which I said yesterday I was craving. I didn't treat myself to the inventor. Romanti Romancing the Inventor by Gil Carragher, like I said I would, because it was like 4 99 on Kindle, or like 3 99 on Kindle, which seemed like quite a lot. And I decided instead to put that money towards buying myself some Moddy Body period pants. That's my birthday treat to myself this month. Can't wait for them to come. Um, but, and I remembered I did have this on my shelf, which I'd kind of forgotten about. So um, I've started this one, I'm about 40 pages in, and I'm enjoying it so far. So, like I said, I'll probably do some reading backwards and forwards to Ailsa's and then tomorrow I'm going to Manchester backwards and forwards which is like hours on the train so I'm hoping I can like finish this one before the readathon is over. Wish me luck but um but yeah that's kind of my little update for you there. I'm in America with Ginger Lamp so happy to see you there. Are you filming? Yeah. <laughs> see ya. Is. It's it's actually <laughs> Good morning. So I'm off to Manchester. Um, I'm leaving my flat very shortly. Um, it's reasonably early. It's early for Sunday. It's like eight o'clock. <laughs> um, and I am going to Manchester, I don't think I mentioned, um, because of the release of this book, which is fantasy, although it's not by women, but it's pretty darn good. And that is The Fork, the Witch and the Worm, which is the new instalment in Christopher Paolini's Inheritance Cycle, which is a four part series that came out a few years ago and is one of my favorite fantasy book series of all time. And this came out recently, which is sort of like short stories set in that world after the events of the original series. And um, Christopher Pellini is currently on his UK book tour and I am chairing an interview with him today in Manchester at Waterstones. So that is very exciting because I've been a fan of his books since I was about 12. Um, they are one of my all time favourite series. I even have a plant named Safira after the main dragon. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, but Manchester is a little well away, like two and a half hours or something on train. I've never been to Manchester. I'm just saying that based on knowing nothing. Um, but I think it's about two and a half hours. So I've got plenty of time for like reading. So I'll be taking my book, um, which is Fires of the Faithful with me by Naomi Kritzer and hopefully finishing this between going there and coming back. I'm just past a quarter of the way through now and very much enjoying it. It's been very tense for um, just over a hundred pages. Um, like a lot's happened but it doesn't feel rushed. Um, 
it's just built up a lot of tension, which is very good. Um, although, can we just say something slightly off topic? This book is terribly made. <laughs> like, look how close the text is to the um, inside. I have to completely bend it open to read it. <laughs> so obviously the spine's really broken, but the content is good. So I'm looking forward to finishing that one, which I didn't realise is also in a duology. So I've ordered the sequel second hand online for like three pounds, so that's okay. But on that topic, the sequel to The Wrath and the Dawn, which I ordered off Wordery, has come. Uh, it came yesterday. The Rose and the Dagger, which I'm obviously not going to get to read during the readathon now. Um, but I really enjoyed The Wrath and the Dawn even more than I was really expecting to. And although I hear the sequel isn't quite as good, um, I'm still really looking forward to getting the satisfaction of um, the story rounded up and I hope things work out like I want them to, or at least um, in a way that works <laughs> within the frame of the narrative. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the sequel to that one. So I managed to start a few new series during this readathon. Uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, The Wrath and the Dawn, which is a duology, and The Fires of the Faithful, which is a duology. Um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone is a trilogy. So I need to get reading them. Went over, went wonderfully. Now I'm rushing to get the train. So it is seven o'clock and I'm back in my flat now. I had a lovely time in Manchester. The event went very well. It was a lot of fun chatting to Christopher Bellini um, and asking him all about um, his new book. So um, do check that out. I love the Aragon books. If you haven't read them, enjoy fantasy. You just, you have to. Um, but my boyfriend's about to come round, so I'm done. Like, I'm not reading anything else for the readathon, but I am pretty pleased with my progress. I didn't finish this book because on the way back on the train, I ended up watching My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2 instead. <laughs> but I'm halfway through now. I'm about 200 pages in. So I'm pleased with my progress and I'm enjoying it so I will finish it next week. Um, I read the entirety of Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I read the entirety of Wrath and the Wrath and the Dawn, I listened to the entire entirety of Briony and Roses, I've listened to half of Charlie Bone and the Time Twister which is the second Charlie Bone book and I listened to the second half of Entreat Me by Grace Draven. I'd started that one before the readathon, so I finished that one. So all in all, I am pleased with my progress. That is more than I would usually ever read in a week. And I have enjoyed everything, which is so cool to be able to say, because that could have not happened. <laughs> so I'm really pleased that everything worked out. And I've had so much fun. I've never run a readathon before. And I would totally do it again. In fact, Jill and I are already talking about more dates for a Femme Fantale 2.0. If you guys are interested, let us know. Um, we definitely want to do one again next year in the spring, but we might even do one in the autumn this year if there's interest, because we've had so much fun. Um, let me know um, if you participated in the readathon, what you read, if you found some new favourite books, I'd love to hear about it. I've had so much fun chatting to you all on Twitter as well. I don't know what else I can say except that I've had so much fun. I feel like I've run read tons and tons of great stuff, so it's all just been very successful. What more can you ask for from a readathon? Nothing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything. I have vlogged for nine days my reading now, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I will see you all again in the next one.